plan and what he said if you'll bring your supply if you'll jump immediately into the river we'll start to see things happen and uh, that's what I'm believing for today and so Dr. Tan was in Indonesia and my son actually Charles got to spend some time with him over there he just rant and raves about that talks about that often and so he is a wealth of information and uh, he won't lack for words when he gets up here I'll guarantee it so when the questions are asked he'll be able to have a ready answer but what I want you to do is I want you to what we call pull on the anointing. And that basically means uh, be involved. When he's speaking, uh, be attentive, and then just pull on what God has brought. So I believe he has a specific word for us today. Do you guys believe that? That's good. Well, Dr. Tan, why don't you come on up? You and you guys just welcome him as he comes up. Good morning. Yeah. Ooh. I feel like I'm in a room full of people that I know and love, literally. Uh, uh, we have people from um, Springfield, Illinois. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm, 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 I'm getting better with that, who drove up and pastor drove up from Kentucky and different type places. So um, I've known the Minkies for a long time, it feels like. So anytime they ask, my answer is yes. Um, and um, so, so this is important to me. Um, I don't often get to speak on these topics that, that we're going to talk about, so my heart is really in expectation for what God will say. 
um, I saw the little clip you posted on Facebook and I thought, wait a minute, when did they have, the clip was so nice and crisp and clear. And I thought, wow, that's just, who even knew that you could, I, I just was surprised. I like, was there someone sitting on the front row with an iPhone <laughs> filming me the last time I was here or something, you know? Anyway, I'm glad you all came. Um, we're going to have four services together. It is rich, 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 rich. Uh, do I sound a little too loud to you all? No, do I sound okay? I sound okay? Good. Well, let's all stand with me for a little while. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. So let's just go ahead and, and reorientate and tune ourselves in. Come on, right where you are, lift your hands up however you want to, however you go on out of the overflow of your heart. Mande blefe kasum bringash to nen glendo mundilias manje. Mande le bafridias to solananda labai. Brefeloche, en grande, asum bandea, som brafo no fekereme Sicilio de Lanande. Yeah, Father, most care about Freda. Ah, great and mighty one, we worship you. Ah, maso ke es un boko un de kle de bafakus non glinda ma frikes zuli ande zekele mas sokolo no frikes mon dilian dolo bo frikesta e grendo no no frikisa e nana mo frikas non gle e nana ya so krendo bo frikis non glinda ma frikos ande bene non brefe dutsa kata kara mo se kere e brefe la sana e so no no mo brefe fr mas zili on da nana frnai. E sakara masiki, e soko rekaya, ingle sono mofradai, yeah, mafoko, hi, o mofrike, worthy to be praised, o bafalusini, every mess and dono, embra mumo brafamasine, yeah, purposes no morfidisa, purpa no frikai, ha ha, soko lo mofrikise, embanda estobla famasi, e blifinuno no vreme, sakara masa, korabasako, e creke no, ah, we worship, we mofrikasa, mas. High and lifted up, more frikesa. High and no frikesa. Yeah, yeah. So we gather in the name frikesa. No liandele mengeo soto ro frebesa tiri onda. Brafa lusenanjo pete fredesa tana masi kete brafa lusenanjengla ma frikeso pete framasi zili andele nene no frikasa e brafa nasa to tohla ma ha frikesa nondi e brafa lusenaya zeko de brafa lusakora ma brakola ba frikis. Yeah, sabataka, zeke, nen kle gom brefikiso, so purpa da fridesa, so prefiles and don frimisene, nen bra isum, ambe asu no mamaya, so toda da bafrikesa, zona number filesu, mentea, so toda mo frikesa, peta bra mama, frete, so tutulios noma, bate fredasu, so frebeti sidianda. Yeah, Father Mofrikesa, so prefilesa, so purpose, 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 purpose. As so fre mas so fre mi si silion de as so fre mama mbafa no nde de da barfilis no 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 barfmaste. Better fre bas so lenanda, brafnuje eya kolana angronge a aso mbeya menteya sundon de na na mbrofiles so fre bishte ke be so kora bahasa ko a sakaramasi de fre desa baba. Zetete, zetete, zata da and die. Now a purpose, 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 purpose. Baso brofelisa da frebesa zofremesa zata monde lebe frede. So, 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 Father, we 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 call for divine utterance for these meetings, Father. We call for divine utterance to bring divine purpose and. Nam brefe kasa nan jeke la mafreda. Thank you, Father, for streams and supplies of the Spirit of God. Thank you for manifestations and demonstrations of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father, for stirrings, for stirrings, for stirrings, for stirrings. Ah, we call for stirrings for every church and every ministry and, and every office that's in this room. Father, we call for stirrings. The lives and the destinies in this room, we call for the stirrings of the Spirit of Koramas today. Ah, stirrings of the Spirit of God. Thank you, thank you, Father. So, Father, we're believing you for utterance. We're believing you for heaven to speak. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, be seated. Well, good morning again. Praise the Lord. If anyone's watching us online, wherever and however, good morning. Um, I have four services with you all. And like I said, I feel like I'm in, I'm in a very comfortable, friendly room with a lot of people that I already know. And, um, um, and, and that's fine. I've learned to preach in many places where, where it's not a friendly room. 
and uh, it doesn't make a difference because the Spirit of God. You know, sometimes when you're out ministering that way, you can step into a bubble of the anointing and just not know who's in the room anymore. You know, and really that's the best place to be preaching from. And so I'm just thankful for all the pastors that are in the room and all the ministers that are in the room and all the churches represented in the room. I love, I love that ministers can come together and give our hearts and our ears to the Spirit of God to hear what the Spirit of God have to say. I think that this is an aspect that we as the Church of Jesus Christ got to come back to again, uh, recognizing different streams and different flows of the Spirit of God, you know. One of the things that the Lord told me to do um, a while ago, a couple of years ago, was, was He told me that, that the streams were coming together. And I understood, I understood that to mean that I would, I would, in bringing my supply here stateside, that I would cross streams and move out of my usual streams, the ones that I usually go to. And again, there's nothing wrong with going to the churches that you usually go to and hanging with the people that you usually hang with. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but what is wrong is if you think that where you are and what you are is all that there is. That's a problem. You know, that's a problem. And so God's been good and gracious and, and opened up a lot of opportunities for me to, to flow with a whole lot of different people. And I come to find out that really at the foot of the cross, we're all equal. And we all have the same Holy Ghost yes. because we need the same Holy Ghost. Yes, we do. So, so um, I, I started out in ministry in 1995. A man called Hilton Sutton, um, whom I had the privilege of spending time with, and he had me ordained up in Plano, Texas in 1995. That was, that was the first time anyone dared ordain me. <laughs> and, um, and of course, if, 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 if you don't know, uh, Hilton was, back in his day, he laid foundations for a lot of what we understand in our circles about eschatology in the end times. I didn't know it back then, but even then now, when I look back, I see that God was putting that, that little bit in me, you know. And then now come fast forward to all these years after where, where God had me um, move out here stateside. Um, I see us shaping and moving into a season that we used to be preaching about when it comes to the end times. You know, I mean, who would have ever thought that you and I are in a season where, where, um, where we see so much unfolding? And so I, 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 I pinch myself still just to, just to think that God would ordain for us to be alive in this, in this time, you know. Um, when I look at that... <coughs> I have the privilege of being around many people whose whole focus is on the end times. I also have the privilege of being around many people whose whole focus of ministry is the Holy Spirit. And for a while, because I kind of had a little bit of a flow on both sides, I kind of thought, where's my place in that? Did, did you know that God has a place for us, like individually? Isn't that good to know that God has a place for us individually? And I always thought like, Am I, am I more Holy Ghost or am I more end times? I mean, which one, which side do I wear, where and, and which side do I fall on and, and, and all that kind of thing? You know, like what should, what should the emphasis of what I say be, you know, when I go somewhere? Uh, and I even had different ones come and say, well, maybe you should write a book on this. Maybe you should write a book on that. And I didn't quite have a grasp for that until I saw this. And I wanted to, to put this out here because, again, I, I recognize that we've got plenty of pastors in the room, good pastors in the room that I know. And, and, and if you're not a pastor in the room, you're at least a leader or at least a member of one of the churches that are represented in this room. And so you need to hear this just as good. 1 Corinthians 10. We already have lunch prepared for us, so that means I don't need to dismiss anyone early. Uh, we're already in the room, so that's taken care of. 1 Corinthians 10, a familiar passage of Scripture uh, Brother Hagen talked about in his marriage book, 1 Corinthians 10, 32 says, Give no offense either to the Jew or to the Greek or the Gentile or the nations, depending on which version of the Bible you're using, or to the church of God. So notice this, how in Scripture there are but three categories of people on the earth. Notice how, how, how this is how God lays it out for us. There are about three categories of people on the earth. Category number one would be the Hebrew nation, the Jews. Those are the people with the old covenant. Category number two would be the nations, the Gentiles, those that are not a part of 
anything else, and they are the people with no covenant. And then you have category number three, the Church of Jesus Christ. And, and the Church of Jesus Christ is made up of people from the old covenant who had uh, uh, the old covenant and made up of people who had no covenant and then God called us out, the ecclesiastes, the called out ones, were called out into this new man called the Church of Jesus Christ. So you're in either one of these three categories. Now I found out pastors, I found out leaders, I found out missionaries real quick that in our callings, we are called to one of these three primarily. So you, you, if, you, if, you got around, if you got around one of these world evangelism, soul winning types, all they wanna do is go reach the world, you know? And, and if, if, you, if you listen and you gave your heart to that and you listen to that, and I, I came from that, right? I came from a real, uh, after I got born again, I, you know, I was Catholic growing up, and, and the, first church I, the first Protestant church I got into was the Spirit-Filled Charismatic Pentecostal Assemblies of God Church, and they believe in missions. They beat missions into you. Like every Sunday, they beat missions into you. If you were not in missions, you were in sin. One of the two, pick one, you know. And, 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 and if you get around some of those, you would think that, that going out into all the world is all that there is. And I'm not saying that it's not all that that is, but it's not all that there is. And for a while, that really beat me down because I, I never, f you know, I mean, I, you, I, I get with some people and they could walk down the street and by the time they get walking down the street, half the people on the block got born again, right? And that was never me. Like, if you didn't know me, if I wasn't speaking this morning, I'm shy, I'll sit at the back, don't want to talk to people, I try not to make eye contact, I, I just, I, you know, I'm, I'm just awkward that way, you know. Of course, if you really were shy, would you get up in front of a room full of people and say that? That's a whole other thing, but... <laughs> and I used to feel like, wow, look at them. They're, they would come to church every week and say, we want 5,000, we want 500, whatever, right? And I had nobody. I didn't want to even say hi to the cat from next door, you know. Did you know that you ought not compare yourself to someone else's calling. That's a, that's a for sure strategy of the devil cut you short some, sometimes real soon. No, you ought, to, you ought to be, you see, but those same people who are good one-on-one -on -one that I hung around with at church all the time, those same people who are good one-on-one, -on -one who could go, just go on the street and do whatever they did, those same people, if you got them behind a pulpit with a microphone uh, in front of them, they clamped up. I suddenly found that when you put me in this position, I came alive. <laughs> Had no issues whatsoever. So see, maybe, 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 just maybe, God actually knew what he was doing in calling us. So then I don't need to compare myself. So anyway, so you see here that there's three categories. And, and can I tell you that with every calling, I found that we are called to a certain specific group. So some people are going to be called to the world. T.L. Osborne. That's all he ever wanted. Just go on out and do everything he could. To. Now again, Nothing's exclusive. So in other words, you're not just going to be exclusively to the world and nothing else. That's because Ephesians tells us that the apostle, the, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, they're supposed to build the church and get the church going. So don't, don't, don't anyone think of exclusivity that way. And, and then, and then you, you find some others and they, all they want to do is, is go and do everything they can to get Israel going. You know, I was just on the phone with someone two days ago who's all about Israel, and that's all she does is Israel, 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 Israel. You spend five minutes where you walk away from her speaking Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? But then there are those called to the church, and I found me in that category. I found me in that position where the, my, primary, my primary call was to the Church of Jesus Christ. Now, from the Church of Jesus Christ have come ministries to reach the world. From the Church of Jesus Christ have come ministries to, to reach Israel. So I'm not ignoring those two, but I'm just, I'm just learning where my place is. And I'm most effective in my place. And I'm of absolutely no effect pretending to be in your place. Right. So in my place, so this, this was where it began for me. I started seeing that my ministry was primarily to the church. And the more I understood that, the more comfortable I was with it. Now, hear me. Churches have started because of what I've done. Churches have been maintained because of what I've done. 
groups and um, a wealth of knowledge and information and different type things have come to Israel because of what I've done. But that wasn't my primary focus. My primary focus was the church. It's not enough to just know that you've called. It's necessary to know who you're called and what you're called to. Because I hear too many people say, well, I'm called. Well, to what? To where? To, wh- to, to whom? It's necessary to bring specificity to our calling because if God can call us, if you can say God called me by name, well, surely he can say a little bit more besides calling you by name. <laughs> and so, so when I understood that, and I spent a lot of my time in church. So again, I'm, I'm walking through my journey with you, right? So in church, I found that you had, you had all these heavy end time types and all they want to talk about is end times, end times, end times. Earthquake here and famine there, war over. And then you come over here to, to the other side and you've got all these Holy Ghost people. They, all they want to do is talk about Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. They want to get you ro- laughing, running and rolling on the floor. And the more you do, the more Holy Ghost there, there, there is for you, you know. And I, again, I, I was just kind of in between, kind of in between, like, I understand this, I appreciate that, I roll with some of them, I, I famine with some of them, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I, you know, right? And then the Lord showed me this, Acts chapter 2, you all know this because it's a familiar passage of scripture, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, of course, if you speak in tongues, you know this passage because you would have heard it preached everywhere. But Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven. By the way, I, this I believe. I'm believing God for this in the time that you and I live in. That there will be Peter's rise up with the eleven. That alone is a miracle. That, that one man would rise up. But, but, you know, and if you ask anyone who preached on the day of Pentecost, I promise you they'd say Peter. But if you read that carefully, it says Peter standing up with the 11. In other words, he stood up with the support of the 11, with, with the 11 behind him. You know, I have no issues being one of the 11. I tell you what, I have no, I got no issues. If God, if that anointing is on Peter, let's let, let's let, let's let, let's let, let's let, let Peter have the microphone. Amen. Yeah, I, I don't have issues being one of the 11. I don't have issues one of being the, the other 100, 110 back there, you know. So we ought to go with whoever got the anointing. But so Peter, standing up, the 11 raised his voice and said to the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jeru- Jerusalem, let this be known and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour. But listen to this. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. He's going to quote Joel 2. And verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. I will pour out my spirit. Now, I was reading this one day, this couple of four or five years ago. I was, at least, I was reading this one day, and I suddenly saw that by the inspiration of the spirit of God, the last days and the outpouring of the spirit of God, as far as God was concerned, was the one same self-event. So if we're going to be talking about the end times, we need the outpouring of the spirit of God. To see us through. But if we are going to talk about the Spirit of God, the purpose of the outpouring of the Spirit of God is because we're in the end times. When you read this, when you read this in the original over there in Joel, Joel didn't actually say last days. He said, in that day. So Peter, by the inspiration of the Spirit of God, he changed that phrase, that day, to last day. Something shifted in that day that Peter was talking about. And in that shift, the end times was proclaimed, but the end times was proclaimed, listen now, the end times was proclaimed in the power of the Spirit of God. So I propose this. I propose that if we only talk about the end times without talking about the Holy Spirit, we don't have the power of the wherewithal to live in these end times. But if we only talk about the Holy Spirit without recognizing the times that we live in, then we have no purpose for all this power that God gave us. So everywhere I've gone, to anyone who's listened, I've told them, if you're going to talk end times, you've got to talk Holy Ghost. If you're going to talk Holy Ghost, you've got you to help people understand the times we live in. Because I've sat at tables, I've sat at tables with, with Holy Ghost folk who, 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 whose meanings are all about the Holy Ghost, and they've told me, we don't actually ever talk about the end times. They've told me this. 
you know, and like we, we, we don't understand it, we don't, we don't, we, we don't, we don't want to be in that neighborhood. Well, listen, the Holy Ghost was given to help us understand the times. And so, the more I understood that the times we live in, hear me, the times we live in demand the spirit that's in and upon us. We, could, we couldn't be in these times outside of the spirit of God. That's why, that's why Peter, by the unction, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, quoted Joel, and not only did he quote Joel, he, 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 he shifted it a little bit and made this the beginning of the end times. Now, to be fair, Joel, when, when you read in context what Joel was talking about, Joel wasn't talking about the day of Pentecost. That's why when you read Joel, he goes on to talk about the skies and the moons and everything else being darkened. Joel was talking about a darker day. Now, here, 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 here's what's important. So when Joel talked about that day, listen now, that day, which would lead to the end of days, began in the book of, uh, began in the day of Pentecost. So, so that day, whatever day, whatever time that was, began on the, on the day of Pentecost. And we are now almost at the end of that day that Joel was talking about. Does that make sense to you all? Yeah. Now, if that day started, that day started on the day of Pentecost, if that day started with us needing the Holy Spirit, how much more, how much more, how much more are you and I towards the end of that day going to need the Holy Spirit? How, how much more? And so that's why, that's why I, have a hard, I have a hard time understanding pastors who want to have church outside of the flow of the Spirit of God. And hear me, the flow of the Spirit of God doesn't mean you have to have everyone run around every Sunday. Doesn't mean you have to have everyone roll on the floor. That's not, that's not because that isn't the only flow. You understand that? that and oh, by the way, that, that's not always a flow anyway. That's many times a response to the flow. See, the power isn't in me running around the room. The power is not in me rolling on the floor. The power is in me responding to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and not caring if I look like a fool while I'm rolling on the floor. That's where the power is. So when we think that the power is in running, then we make that up because you could, any one of you could just get up right now and run around the room. That's not, the, that's not where the power is. The power is in pr following the promptings of the Spirit of God. And if I, if I follow the prompting and roll and laugh and, and jump around and don't care what any of you think, I've shifted into a place of no restraint by you. And I've shifted into a place where the next time he tells me to step out of the boat, I can step out because I've been trained not to care what you think about me. So the flow of the Spirit of God can come out in teaching. The flow of the Spirit of God can come out in preaching. The flow of the Spirit of God can come out in worship. The flow of God can come out in prayer. The flow of the Spirit of God is every way, every, every what way. Oh, 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 since you're still there in Acts, since you're still there in Acts, since you're still there in Acts, and, and, and we're not following a prescribed uh, a curriculum or anything, we're just, we're just talking from our hearts. Is that okay? Yes. Look at this. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, if you read the King James especially. Here's, here, and here's, here's, a part, here's a scripture that we quote wrong often. We says that he will pour out his spirit. You ever heard that? Listen to how, it, how, how it's actually stated here. I will pour out of my spirit. You see, if he poured out his spirit, he would just pour out his spirit the one time. But if he's pouring out of his spirit, he can pour out of his spirit any day, every day. Amen. So the pouring of the spirit is not, was not a one-time event. Because he didn't pour out his spirit, he poured out of his spirit. Ah, <laughs> there are pourings of his spirit for us today. There are pourings of his spirit for us tomorrow. There will be pourings of his spirit available to you and I as long as you and I are on the earth realm. So what am I looking? So, so, so I said all of that to say this. So I suddenly understood and, and it happened just in a split second. It, to me, it looked like in a split second. The moment I understood that, I understood that many of the signs that end time teachers talk about, famine, Israel coming together and all the other, I understand that because there were three categories of people on the earth, certain signs were certain signs to different groups. Now, even though that sign might not be to the group I'm in, the category I'm in, I still see the sign. 
but I ought not be moved by that sign unless that's the highway I intend to get out of. So for example, the sign of Israel coming together, that's a sign to Israel. If, you see, if I, were, if I were a heathen out in the world, why would I care that? Why, why, would, why would that be a sign to me that Israel came back? Why would I care? Why would I even think, oh, look, 1948, Israel came back. Oh, that's a sign that God's alive. You've never seen an atheist say that. Because it, it wasn't a sign to them. It was a sign to the Jew. Because they suddenly understood that everything that the Father spoke about our nation come together, it actually happened, 1948. The sign, of, the sign of wars and famines and everything. Well, who's that assigned to? That's a sign to the world. Because when, when, when they see the famines and when they see the wars and, 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 and when they see all the toilet paper disappearing off Walmart, they know the end is upon them. So then they under... The, so, and so I said, now Lord, what's the sign for the church? The sign for the church is the outpouring of the Spirit of God. You and I in the church of Jesus Christ, we're not moved by the famine. We're not moved, we're not moved by the earthquakes. To a certain extent, we're not even moved by what's happening in Israel. Why? Because we're the church. What are we moved by? We're moved by the Spirit of God in outpouring on us and among us. We've got our signs mixed up. Now, maybe this has been preached and I haven't heard it, but until I saw that, I'd never seen that before. I never heard that before. And I thought, so, now I thought, so those signs are, so I've been, so when I, when I get on up there and, and try and scare people into the end times and tell them about the famines and the wars and all that other, I'm giving you signs that might not, might not be the sign you ought to be looking for. The sign for the church is the glorious, is the glorious outpouring of the Spirit of God, because I'm the church, and in the church, He's outpouring on me from His Spirit. Now, are there signs going to be happening out there with all that other? Well, yeah, because they're all they're all happening concurrently. There's probably stuff happening in Israel right now that you and I are probably not intelligent enough to even go figure out because there's all that all that political tricky icky dicky stuff that's all going on. It's probably a sign to someone. Just not me. So different signs to different people. Why would God do that? Because wouldn't it be confusing if, if, if wouldn't it be confusing? See, if you were driving up here, uh, driving out from wherever you all came from, and all the signs were in a different language that you didn't speak, it would still be a sign. It just didn't speak to you. So if, 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 if you started following every sign that didn't speak to you, you'd end up nowhere quick. So that's why when the church looks at the signs of what's happening, in the, well, all those earthquakes and all, those, all that famine and all that war, that's supposed to happen. Why? Because the dark's going to get darker. But what does the dark getting darker have to do with the light getting brighter, with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost? On the, what does that... Now, that, that ought to tell me where they are, and in, and in knowing where they are, I know where I am. But just because I know where they are does not mean I am there with them. So when I, when I, when I saw that, for a couple of years, I didn't dare say that, because I didn't know who I could say that to and not get smacked across the face. I didn't. I just, I, because again, maybe the teaching's everywhere out there and I'm just the only person that never heard it, but I didn't hear that. But the more I saw that, the more I thought, wait a minute. God in his specificity, just the way he is, why would he give everybody random signs that spoke to everyone else? He's never done that. God's never done that. In other words, in other words, when God, when God spoke to Abraham, uh, Abraham to look at the sand and, and look at, look at the, the stars, that was a sign for him. It wasn't for everyone. So everyone who was looking at the sand didn't have a million and a half kids. <laughs> Aren't you thankful for that? <laughs> right? So God is specific with his signs. 
Now, again, just because he's speaking to someone else and I and not me doesn't mean that I don't see those signs or don't understand those signs. And it also doesn't mean I don't profit from those signs. So I, 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 I can see the signs of what God is telling Israel and I can profit of that because, again, if I understand what God's doing in Israel and where he is with Israel, I can kind of plot where, I'm, where I am right now. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of like, it's kind of like how. Listen, you, you know how, you know how, you know how Christmas comes after Thanksgiving. So if you're at the mall, if you're at the mall, and you see Christmas decorations come up, by default you know Thanksgiving come first, <laughs> right? Right. So they don't have to have a sign that says Christmas is coming, but Thanksgiving comes. You don't have. They don't have to have a sign. As long as you see those Christmas decorations come up, and they seem to be coming up earlier every year, don't they? But the moment you see the Christmas decorations come up, you know Thanksgiving come first. So when I see all that's happening over there in Israel and over there in the world, when I see all that's happening, guess what? I know stuff's going to happen here because stuff's going to happen with us first before it happened to them. But I'm not going to give my concentration to what's happening then. Why? Because I ought to be so caught up. Listen, if the outpouring of the Spirit of God is being outpoured on you, why do you think you'll have the time, the energy, the space, and the attention to be looking at anyone and everything else? I won't have time to be looking at what's happening in the world. When I, I have the Spirit of God outpouring on me and I'm looking over there at the world, it, it, why? It couldn't be. Why? Because the Spirit of God, when He outpours on me, I, I, I would imagine He would encompass me. Why? Because He's God. <laughs> so then my attention shifted to what I was called to the church, to what God's doing in the church, the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And the more I saw that, the more I recognized that if we would concentrate on what we're called to, and again, hear my heart, I'm not taking away from anything any of you have been called to. If you feel like you're called to the mission field of the world, go for it. Go to your pastor, have them bless you. They'll probably want to support you and all that kind of good thing. If you feel like you're called to Israel, go for that. Do, do whatever that means, go for it. The point is, we got our signs crossed when it comes to the end time. You see, that's why when we, when we look at the famines and, and the wars and everything, people in the church get, get frightened. Yes, that's so why did they get frightened? Because that, that's not a sign for me. The sign for me is the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Yeah. So when I keep my focus on the outpouring of the Spirit of God, knowing that while this sign on me, the outpouring of the Spirit of God is, is happening, the sign on them, famines also going to be happening. And the wars and, and whatnot all in the Middle East, that's going to be happening at the same time, but... That's their sign, not mine. Now, now, can what happens there affect us here? Yes, but that's why you need the outpouring of the Spirit of God because the outpouring of the Spirit of God on, on you, in you, through you, that's what shields you and protects you from all those other signs infecting you. That's why it's so crazy when you got pastors and you got churches who don't want to don't want to make room for the spirit of God to flow. Because the moment you do that, you take yourself out of that outpouring, and then you've got to go to the other outpourings. We've got the flow of the spirit of God outpouring on us. They've got the flow of everything else outpouring on them. More than ever before, we need to have the spirit of God out for, out outpouring in on among us. And you don't have to wait for an annual conference for that either. We ought to have that every time we gather. We ought to have that every time we lift our hands and say, Father, here we are. We are your sons. You're the outpour on us. We ought to have that every time our focus is tuned to him. And when people understand that, then suddenly the end times don't seem as bad anymore. Why? Because while all of that's happening around the world, and it is, right? It is. I mean, you, you don't, regardless of, of, of how astute you are when it comes to the news and, all, and, and politics and all the other, stuff is cooking. You know, stuff is cooking and things are changing. That's just where that is. But what hasn't changed is that for the church, the outpouring of the Spirit of God is an ongoing, and, and, and again, and again, and again, Go back and study this. He didn't say the Spirit of God would be outpoured on you. He said, outpour from the Spirit of God. So there's a continual outpouring. Uh, when the Lord led me to write books, that was one of the things, that was the angle I'm taking from. 
that we got to talk more about the Holy Spirit. I think we have a generation rising up who might have heard of, are not sure about, and for sure don't have an actual scriptural definition for how the Spirit of God moves. By the way, by the way, and so that's why I started writing. Um, and I've got plenty more that are coming up real quick. I was telling Ryan and Chrislin about um, different projects I'm working on right now um, that, that the publishers are technically already own, even though I haven't written them yet. So that's, that's good news, you know. Um, uh, the Lord told me to, that in my writings, my heart was to leave a body of work behind that when I'm gone, another generation can glean from that and have a relationship with the Spirit of God. By the way, when you look over there in Acts chapter 2, look at the definition, because again, you and I live in a day of signs and wonders. Have you noticed how certain groups, certain, certain groups of, of us in the Church of Jesus Christ, they have a great love, and they should, we should, have a great love and a great explosion of signs and wonders all the time. Have, have, have you noticed that? And we all seem to want to go to hot spots where signs and wonders are happening. You know, let's all go over here and let's go over there. And, and again, nothing wrong with that because God moves by times and seasons and God moves among people. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I was a, uh, if, if you were part of Rhema at all, if you were part of, 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 of Kenneth Hagin ministry at all, you were part of a teaching revival. You know, you were part of the teaching revival that swept the body of Christ. And uh, when I understood that, when I saw that, but look over here in Acts chapter 2, no, notice this, notice this. That on the day of Pentecost, this momentous event that happened with the outpouring of the Spirit of God, something that had never happened before, 120 people, never happened before. With the speaking in tongues, never happened before, never happened before, all right? That just never happened. With someone like Peter, and again, you've got to remember that just a couple of chapters before, Peter had just denied Christ, right? Just a couple of chapters before, Peter denied Christ, and so here he was, anointed by the Spirit of God, suddenly gets up by the anointing, and not only did he get up and... and but he got up and he quoted Joel, which again, you, if you know anything about Peter at all from what you see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he didn't, know, he didn't know Joel from anyone. There's no way he could have known anything about Joel, you know. But notice this. Notice, notice this is divine order. Let me help you. The call of God on my life is to lay foundation and set things in divine order. This is divine order. That whenever there is an explosion, whenever there is an outpouring of the Spirit of God, divine order is that we bring it back to Scripture to redefine what happened. Here's exactly what he did. So Peter, having experienced this outpouring of the Spirit of God, goes right back by the Spirit of God to Joel to bring definition to what happened. If Scripture cannot define our manifestations from us, then how do we know where those manifestations come from? And, that's what, and this is the generation in front of us right now. They want the manifestation, but even if they got it, they're not able to bring scriptural definition to that, gen, that manifestation. Now, let me bring that back even a little bit further. Peter quoted Joel. But did you know that Joel was actually quoting Moses? In the outpouring of the Spirit of God? When he said that your sons and daughters will prophesy? Why? Because when Joshua had come to Moses and said, Moses, Moses, there's, there's, there's people out there prophesying, uh, uh, and, and we ought to stop them. And Moses said, listen, you don't want... Moses said, it's my heart that everyone prophesy." So again, Scripture was quoting Scripture, was referencing Scripture, was referencing Scripture, and what, what that was doing was that, that was bringing safety to the manifestations of the Spirit of God. We've got to come back to that. Can I, tell you, can I tell you this? Pastors, can I tell you this, leaders? The standard of the Word and the Spirit of God has to be maintained and raised in, in all of the regions God called us into. I don't, dare, I don't dare say raise because in some places, they're hardly maintaining the thing. We've got to at least maintain the standard of the word and spirit. Did you know that, that if we just preach the word without the spirit, that, that, that would be a dead word? Why? Because it takes the spirit to bring that word to life to us. There is no amount of counseling that can set some people free that a touch of the spirit of God cannot. Now, again, I'm, I'm not doing a way of counseling. I'm not doing a way of any of that. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we, we, we got to take everything God has for us in order. And, and, and God's order is the word and the spirit. So notice how here he says, I will pour my spirit in the last days and, and then I'll pour my spirit on all flesh. 
So there is an outpouring of, of the Spirit on all flesh. Here's, here's the first initial thing that happened when the Spirit poured out on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now, again, in context of Acts 2, sons and daughters prophesying, this is the sign that Peter used to describe what happened except that they were speaking in tongues. But you see, when you speak in tongues and there is an interpretation of the tongues, that's equal to prophecy. So this verse here, and again, Joel could not have known that they were going to be speaking in a foreign language they didn't, they didn't understand, right? And here's what I love about prophecy. Prophecy can, can put you in a position where you say something that will mean a hundred different things to a hundred different people and, 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 and the prophet will walk away from that, don't, don't know what he said. So in context, he's saying, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Well, one version, one form, one method, one flow of prophecy is tongues and interpretation of tongues, which they had just seen in the early parts of Acts chapter 2. But wait a minute. That, that flow of tongues and interpretation of tongues is also available to you and I. Tongues and interpretation of tongues are the easiest way to slide into the spiritual gifts and spiritual manifestation. And again, this is something that, that this is something that this is something that I see on the rise, where in our spirit filled churches, where in our spirit word and spirit churches we call ourselves, where we're kind of moving away from tongues. Slowly but steadily, we're kind of we're kind of we're kind of well we have been inching away for a long time now. You know what we substitute that with instead? We substitute that instead with good singing. Hear my heart, don't have a problem with good singing. In fact, if you're, if you're going to want to sing with a microphone in front of you, please be good. <laughs> that, that helps, that helps. Have you noticed how, have you noticed how, have you noticed how in many situations, I go far back enough to remember when the worship leaders would lead us in singing in tongues. Anyone remember those days? When worship, when, huh? But you, in a lot of places now, we kind of harmonize between songs. We kind of we do a little humming and a, mm, mm, hallelujah. We kind of do a little thing like that. And in my mind, I'm thinking, wait a minute, we've just robbed the people of an opportunity to come together and learn to flow in that, in that, in that flow of spirit worship. Wh why is that? Why is that? Because the devil doesn't want this of your sons and daughters prophesying and tongues is the easiest way to get into a flow of prophecy. Mm. God. Amen. Tongues is the one thing you can activate whenever you want to activate that and immediately step into the, step into the miraculous right there. Hallelujah. I think many times when people try and, or, well, I don't know this many times, but sometimes when people hear me sound intellectual. I didn't say I was, I just sounded that way. They're always surprised that I have such a heavy emphasis on tongues. But, but, but if you want it to be intellectual by God's standard, you got to do it His way. And His way, His way is that the outpouring of the Spirit. I love how the outpouring of the Spirit got a hold of their tongue before it got a hold of any other part of them. Because again, you would, imagine, you would imagine that on this momentous day, after, 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 after generations had waited for the releasing of the, of the new man, the church of Jesus Christ on, on, on the earth, you would imagine that maybe the Lord might want to anoint their hands, anoint their feet, anoint something. He got a hold of their tongue. Why? Because James later on told us that the tongue is already it, it's as a rudder. And however your tongue go, your life will go with it. So the Holy Spirit knew that if he got a hold of their tongue, he would get a hold of their life. So the part about you that the enemy wants to get, or let me put it another way, the part about you that the enemy doesn't want God to get is your tongue. That's the part he don't want you. That's, that's the part that the enemy doesn't want God to have access to. Because if, he has act, if God has access to your tongue, your life will fall in that direction. I know, I say this everywhere I go, I know that what I'm walking into now and all that I'm doing now are things I prayed about as a young teenager back then in Singapore. Because after I got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, I, would, I loved it. This idea that God was still speaking, I, my mind went, all, it exploded all kinds of, I was like, what, God still speaks? Who knew? 
You're like, what? You know, like who could even imagine? Like, what are you talking about? God speaks, you know? And I was, man, I was praying in tongues. Never knew back then what I was praying about. Never knew back then anything of what I'm doing now. But I know I was back then I was praying to what I'm doing now. For sure. I was my own prayer project and didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> I was my own prayer project, didn't know it. I was, but that's exactly what Romans said, that the Holy Spirit made intercession for me. He was making intercession for me because I needed that intercession. We rob ourselves when we don't allow for the Spirit of God to have flow in the service. So the devil doesn't mind us gathering because outside of the flow, it, this is just nothing. It's social at best, emotional at best. You know, there's no power in that. Why? Because Isaiah tells us it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. And you can gather all you want, and if there isn't an anointing in the room, then it's just a gathering of yoked people. You come in yoked, you walk out yoked. You will still be yoked. That's it. No difference. We need to have the Holy Spirit in the church and in the gathering that we come together in. That's what the times you and I live in demand. We, we have to have that. Why do I say that? Because God doesn't do anything purposelessly. So the fact that God chose this time to pour out of His Spirit implies that in this time, the intensity would be so much that we couldn't just rely on a few chosen ones have the Holy Spirit on them. We all had to have the Holy Spirit. It might have been good enough in the Old Testament to just have the king, the prophet, the priest have the Holy Spirit on them, but the times that you and I live in, the times that you and I, had, God has ordained for us to be in, it's, it's, it's not enough anymore to just have that prophet there and that king there and that priest back there be anointed and have the Holy Spirit. We all have to have the Holy Spirit. That's why he says, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. It isn't... It, it, and so, and so when we step away from that and just, and just, and just try and academically approach the book, we suddenly rob ourselves of the ability to see what the book says. Why? Because the book was meant to be seen from the heart before it's understood in the head. And, and you see out of your heart by the Holy Spirit opening the eyes and illuminating the, the, the mind of your, the eyes of your understanding. So that's why, that's why, and I'm in many hotel rooms, and, and that's why you can be in many hotel rooms, and they got a little Bible in, 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 in that nightstand. Have you noticed that, that just because you got a Bible, and again, I'm not against it, I've given money to help them, because I want, I want a Bible in every nightstand in the hotel. But have you noticed that just because you have a Bible in the nightstand, people don't walk away from that and get saved? Have you noticed that? Right. Why? Because it takes the Spirit to breathe life on that to me. So we got to have, in the Church of Jesus Christ, you got to see every church as a portal by which the outpouring can be poured out. And be poured out to the extent and the level at which it can flood that community. What if, what if every church saw itself that way? That every church was, was, was a portal, was, was the fount from which the tap of the Holy Ghost could be turned on into. And then as it poured and as it flooded out, it would flood out, on, you see that in Acts 2, flood out onto the street so that they could get a drink too. How necessary is the Holy Spirit that in the time you and I live in? John 14, come on. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, also believe also in me. Which, by the way, that alone is a statement of divinity. You know how you sometimes hear people say, you sometimes hear people say, well, you know, Jesus never proclaimed himself to be God and all, and all that. Have, have, you, have you heard people say that? Number one, the reason why they say that is because they don't understand how the Hebrews spoke. Every time Jesus said, Moses said, or Abraham said, but I say this. The reason why the Pharisees got so mad is because they understood that what Moses said was the height of what, of what anyone could say because whatever Moses said was what God said. So when Jesus come around and say, this, here's what Moses said, but here's what I'm saying, he was in effect placing himself above Moses. 
You understand that? And anyway, um, I, what I always tell Bible school students is that if, if, if you want to see what Jesus was saying, really saying, look at the reaction of the Pharisees. They got him for, they got him for blasphemy. What's blasphemy when someone claimed to be God? So Jesus claimed himself. And here's one of those situations. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Man, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a high place to put yourself in. If, if you're telling someone, believe in God, believe in me at the same time. You believe in God, believe also in me. Listen now. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I, I would have told you. Listen now. I go to prepare a place for you. And here is, a, here is, a, here is an end time statement coming in. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Now, see, back then, they were like, wait, where are you going? And if you're going, what, what do you mean? You're, what, like, you're, you're coming back, but we didn't even know you were going anywhere because we thought we were supposed to be with you everywhere you went. So notice, in, even in talking to, 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 to his disciples, he talked a little bit about him going away. But again, at this point, you know, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and again, I understand that in, our, in how we separate Scripture and, and, and how, we've, how we've divided our Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, for the bulk of it we call, we call the New Testament. But the reality is, in, in, in huge chunks of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because Jesus hadn't died, hadn't risen again, hadn't ascended yet, a lot of it was Old Testament. And not only that, and not only that, the bulk of whom he was talking to in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were, 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 were Jews. That's why we needed the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit brought about the teachings that Jesus wanted to give the church but couldn't yet because at the time that he was here, there wasn't yet a church. So then the epistles, the epistles are the continuation of the teachings of Jesus for the church by the Holy Spirit. Because how could Jesus talk to the church if the church wasn't there? There was no church. Matthew 16 was the first time you even found that word when he said, I will build my church. And they were all like, what? You will build your what now? <laughs> I mean, we know what synagogue is. We know what temple is. We know, but what, what's, a, what, I mean, what's, an, what's a called out? Well, I mean, we understand that concept of called out. We understand that. But what's that got to do with us? You see, that's why, that's why when you read even into, into Acts, you find that they still identified themselves as Jews almost, all, almost everywhere they went. Because that was their identity and nothing wrong with that. It doesn't change that. That's their nationality. Nothing wrong with that. But they, they, had to, they had to now understand the spiritual shift that had come in. <laughs> so Jesus now, he was even preparing to tell them, I'm going to go away. And when I go away, I'll come back for you. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, doesn't that just comfort you that he's going to prepare a place for me? That, that alone just comforts me, you know. Um, I, I will come again. I will come again. So that means he come one time, he's going to come. I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Now, 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 jump on down. Jump on down. Again, so the context of this is he's starting to talk about an end of times. Not necessarily the end, but an end of it. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to go, I'm going to come. Stuff is going to happen. Things are going to change. Here's what's going to happen. Verse 12, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, now wait a minute, wait a minute. He who believes in me at that time was only them, but in this time includes us. So this sentence, he who believes in me, used to be just for the following Jews, mainly who believed in him. But now, now it's, in, it's included all of us Gentiles. Because now we all believe in him. So therefore, this sentence now can apply to me. And he, well, I said to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Now again, you have to understand the context of this with the disciples. So they left family, they left business, they left home, they left everything to follow this man through the desert, walking and preaching, thinking he's the Messiah. Now suddenly he says, by the way, it's better for you if I go away. But they left everything to follow him. Here's why, here's why, here's why, here's why. And whatever I ask the Father, and, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
Now, he, he said all of that, here's how all of that's going to happen. Verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. So notice, the context of, of signs, the context of me going away, coming back, preparing a place for you, the context of you being better off without me being here, the context of all of that is, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Don't you love that Jesus even then was foreseeing into our day and recognizing we needed the Holy Spirit who would be with us forever? And he was saying, in effect, look, I can't be with you this way forever. But what you need for the time you're entering into, you need the presence of God in a way that is forever with you. And the only way you can have that is that you can't go back to the temple and the tabernacle because that's not going to be forever. That's going to be torn down pretty soon. I'm not telling you guys that just yet, but, but boys, listen, it's going to be torn down. Pretty, and I'm not going to be here all that much time either because those Romans are going to come get me. But, but, but there is something, someone, some way where the presence of God can be with you forever and I will personally pray for the Father to send you this Holy Spirit that will be with you forever. Now who is this Holy Spirit? The Spirit of Truth. So you saw the Spirit of Truth in action over there in Acts chapter 2 because the moment there was a manifestation, the Spirit led them back to truth, the truth of Scripture. Right? Right? So the Spirit didn't just say, and Peter didn't just get up and say, well, it's the anointing. Let's all roll around the floor and laugh, run around the room a little bit. No, he brought them right back to Scripture because the Spirit of Truth was doing what the Spirit of Truth does. Which the Spirit of Truth leads us back to truth. So anytime I see a manifestation and, and that, from that manifestation, there isn't an element of truth come back to me from the Word of Truth, I have a right to question that, that manifestation. So the, within the framework of Scripture, God has put systems in place to catch manifestations and produce manifestations. And this is the generation, pastors and leaders, listen, this is the generation we must help. They hunger after signs and wonders and flows and demonstration, but they don't know enough of this truth for the Spirit to bring to their remembrance. How can, they bring, how can the Spirit bring anything to their remembrance when they didn't know anything in the first place? This is why pastors must be able to teach. This is why pastors must be able to teach. Because that's the primary function of a shepherd, to feed the sheep. The spirit of truth, haha, whom the world cannot receive. Look at the implication. The world cannot receive. Implication, I can receive because I'm not the world. Right? Notice this. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. Who's he, who's, who's he talking about? The world. So the implication is in the church, I can see him and know him. Huh? So in the church, because I'm the church, I can receive him, I can see him, I can know him. Now, they over there in the world, they cannot receive him, they cannot see him, they cannot know him. I can. That's why, again, Acts 2, that's why on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit outpoured the way it did, the people out on the street did not understand because they did not receive Him, nor see Him, nor know Him. But Peter and his crew, they did. They understood that, hey, this is the Holy Spirit, and not only is this the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit led them back to Joel 2. The Spirit of truth from the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you... You know him, for he dwells with you. Again, a prophetic scripture here, a prophetic scripture. But he dwells with you, current, current, currently he dwells with you, and he will be future tense, be in you. So that day when, he's, when Jesus prophesied about the Holy Spirit being in them, it's our day. You and I get to walk into this prophecy right here. You and I live in the day where He's in us. And the day He came in us, in the manifestation of that, it was the day of Pentecost with tongues. 
they got so full, it came out their mouth. Now, now, look at this, look at this. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Now, that is interpreted two ways. One, if you read early on in John 14, he said, I will, I, will, I will actually come for you. But the other way he came for us is by sending the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he said the Holy Spirit is another helper. So, so, so listen to this. When I have the Holy Spirit, I am not an orphan. But without the Holy Spirit, I'm an orphan. And we got too many sons and daughters of God walking around on the, on the earth realm acting like they're orphans because they haven't received what the Holy Spirit wanted to do for them. They're walking around like, they don't, like their father didn't, didn't do anything for them. They're walking around without, without that outpouring over them. They're walking around being moved by signs of, of what the heathens ought to be looking at. They're being moved by signs of what it, they're walking around without the outpouring. So they're as, as, as far as God's concerned, if you're living like that, you're living like an orphan while in the father's house. As long as the father's concerned, if that's how you're living, in the father's house with everything available to you, Orphan. So the one who's a son, the one who's a daughter, listen now, is simply the one who allows the outpouring of the Spirit of God in them. And when they have that, <laughs> jump on, verse 26, verse 26. But the helper, <laughs> but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Notice how it doesn't say he will manifest to you all things. He will miracle for you all things. He will grow out for you all things. He, will, he, will, he says he will teach you all things. Why? Because children need to be taught. And if children are taught, they can manifest what they need to for life. They can produce what they need to for life. So the Holy Spirit's primary purpose is to teach me. Which again, Acts 2. Please tie everything I'm saying back to Acts chapter 2. Because in Acts chapter 2, you see the Holy Spirit pouring and teaching at the same time. And when he taught, he brought them right back to truth. But the Holy Spirit, but the help of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send my name, he will teach you all things. Wait a minute. You see that word all things? That word all things means that anything I need is part of the things he'll teach me. So listen to this. So the Holy Spirit doesn't just, just teach me about the Bible or teach me about church. He teaches me all things. So everything I need teaching in, any part of my life that I need teaching in, he can teach me. That means if I need to learn about relationships, he can teach me. That means if I need to learn about how to take care of my body, he can teach me. That means that if I need any kind of teaching in any what way, all things, the helper can teach me. You see, again, why restrict the Holy Spirit to just the spooky spiritual stuff? Why restrict the Holy Spirit to just the goosebump on your goosebump? Why not let the Holy Spirit be everything that Jesus said he was going to be to you, which is a helper in life? Come to find out, I needed all kinds of help in life. I didn't just need help with understanding the Bible. I needed all kinds of help. Come to find out that Jesus already knew that before I knew I needed help, which is probably why he sent the helper to come help me with all kinds of everything. But once again, if we remove the Holy Spirit out of our equation, and we approach church and the Bible and life just with our intellect and how it make me feel afterwards. Then we become like kids who play with the cardboard boxes on Christmas morning and ignore the toys that the Father gave to give us. You see kids do that? Mom and dad spend $200 on something, they wrap it up pretty, they rip it up, they, they chuck the toy aside, they play the box instead. <laughs> you know, yeah. And the father look at that and say, listen, don't be an orphan like that. Come take everything I've got for you. 
and the everything I've got for you is the Holy Spirit because in Him, you see, the Holy Spirit is God. In other words, because He's God, wherever God is, all of Him is there, right? In other words, God couldn't come in you but leave a part of Him out. If He came in you, everything about Him came in, everything about, I like to say it this way, Jesus came to bring me to heaven, but the Holy Spirit came to bring heaven into me. So I got on me, I got on me, I got on the inside of me, everything that the Holy Spirit is, and everything that the Holy Spirit is, is God. So therefore, I've got all of God on the inside of me. That's, that's, why, that's, why, that's why we don't ever have to wonder, ooh, what spiritual gift do I have? I, got all, I have access to all of them. Why? Because I have the giver on the inside of me. I got the giver on the inside of me, and, the, and when he moved on the inside of me, he brought everything that he is, and he was, and he always will. He brought that on the inside of me. So I have everything about him on the inside of me. So I don't, have, I don't have to pick one of the nine manifestations. I've got access to them all. And I don't even have to pick them. The Holy Spirit on the inside of me will pop up whichever one's most necessary for that time. I don't have to do any picking. He'll pick it for me. Why? Because come to find out, He actually knows more than I do. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Verse 27, peace I leave with you. Why did they have to have peace left with them? Because there was a lot of stuff that was going to happen to the Jewish nation, to the temple, AD 70 and all that, that would happen in a short time, that if they took their eyes off of him and looked onto that, they would have lost their peace. So he was reassuring them because... In, Read John 14 in context, he was talking about him going away. This is the context of John 14. I'm going away. Stuff is going to happen when I go, but don't worry about it because by the time I go, I'm going to send a helper come live on the inside of you and the helper living on the inside of you, he'll take care of you in anything that you need. By the way, there's stuff going to happen that's really going to look dark, but peace I leave with you. So the context of peace I leave with you was destruction is going to fall in the world. So you could say it this way, the destruction there equals my peace in here. It happened concurrently. So when we suddenly lose our peace, guess what? It's because we've shifted our attention and our focus to those signs instead and, and we, we identified with that group more than we did with this group. Now again, don't hear, don't hear, that, don't hear that to think that, 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 that that's not love, that's not compassion. No, it's love and compassion because the, the way you have love and compassion for the world is to let the Spirit of God outpour on you because if you don't have the outpouring of the Spirit of God on you, you have no ability to reach the world. You have no oomph from heaven to reach anyone. I love them by letting the Spirit pour out on me. I love them by letting the Spirit manifest through me. I love them by letting the Spirit have His way in me. It is all about me. Why? Because this is the vessel by which God intends to reach them. So like I said, the more I, the more I, the more I figured out that what, where my place was and what I was supposed to do and talk about, the more productive I became. That's how the churches started. That's how the evangelists were sent forth. That's how it, it started with, with me allowing for the Spirit of God to flood me. Come to find out, I was never qualified to preach to anyone because I always needed the most help in any one room. But also come to find out that the more I let God flood me, the more out of that flooding everyone could drink. So I, I have said this before, I don't ever prepare to come preach to anyone. Because every time I crack this book open and love and spirit of God to speak, my attitude is, God, I need the most help. Forget them. <laughs> it's, it's, how, it's how I approach this. It's, it actually is how I approach this. Not saying that to be, it's how I approach this. By the way, that's the other reason why I never run dry. Because I only preach out of the old flow of my heart. Why would I want to give you what's in my heart after I spend 40 hours studying on it? Why would I want to get your own revelation, you lazy thing, you? I'm going to spend 40 hours studying for you. Now, obviously, there are times when you've got to put curriculum and all that together. I've done it for Bible schools, you know. But my primary study is for me. Why? Because this outpouring listener is personal. The outpouring is personal. And, 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 and too many times, we try and have a corporate something, something. There wasn't even a personal something, something. How are you going to have a corporate something, something? <laughs> You're not going to have any kind of a corporate flow. You, 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 you barely dripping yourself, corporate flow. 
No, get full for yourself because you need him. How do I know you need him? Because Jesus said we need him. And I'm going to guess that if Jesus said we need him, chances are we do. <laughs> let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Again, again, he reminds them, you have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. So he's reminding them, he says, look, it's okay. All that you see, don't let that trouble you. Now, I'm going to go away and I'm going to come back. But in between, I'm going to give you another helper. So listen, the helper reminds, again, end time, context of end times. The helper in me reminds me he's coming again. So when I don't rely on the helper that he gave me, not only do I forget he's coming again, but then I start being moved by all that's around me. All of that around me scare me. All that, all that famine, all that war, all that Middle East stuff, all, the, all, those, all those supply trucks, not, all of that starts scaring me. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I don't know if that's going to happen, but I do know I have a helper. And my reliance is on the helper helping me. And God can send to me what I need regardless of where everything is. Now, do I want everyone else to get what they want? Yes. Do I think that everyone should have a Walmart stock full of everything? Yes. But I'll tell you what, regardless of what's happening over there on the supermarket shelves, God's going to take care of me. That reliance only comes from understanding the Holy Spirit have good things for you and I. And when we get into that mode and get into that understanding, that the times we live in demand the Holy Spirit. They do. And so I, 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 I sense in my heart, ah, do we have time for a little bit more? Yeah. Good, 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 because we're here anyway. You can all smell the food, but uh, you know, it, that, means, that means lunch taken care of, so that's okay. Hebrews 1. <laughs> Hebrew 1, Hebrew 1, Hebrew 1, Hebrew 1. Come on. Ooh, I like this. I have been waiting a long time to go anywhere and talk about an end time anything. All of this, I've just put out a little bit here and a little bit there, a little bit here and a little bit there. But if you guys, i got four sessions. Hebrews 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, listen now, has in these last days, again, he's picking up from the phrase over there, he's picking up from the phrase over there in, in Acts 2, in Acts 2, because again, that phrase was nowhere to be found until, 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 until Peter put it out there and declared this to be the last days. Has in these last days spoken to us by the Son. So the day that you and I live in, listen now, require the Son speaking to us. But if you reference that back to, to John 14, how is the Son speaking to us? Through the Helper. So when the Helper, the Holy Spirit speaks, is the Son speaking. So that's why over there in, in Revelation 3, when Jesus was standing at the door and knocking of the church, that's why over there in Revelation 3, Jesus had to stand outside of the church to be knocking to get into the church. Why is that? I don't think so much is that they locked Jesus out of the church. I'm pretty sure they locked the Holy Spirit out of the church. And in locking the Holy Spirit out of the church, they locked Jesus out of the church too. Because, in, because in, in the time of Revelation, there, Jesus wasn't in, was not physically in any church. You know who was though? The Holy Spirit. So when they locked him out, they locked Jesus out too because, you know, you're not going to have the Holy Spirit in your church and not have Jesus in your church. You're not, not going to have Jesus and not have the Holy Spirit. They're one and the same. If, if you have one, you got the other. So the fact that they had to be, Jesus had to be knocking on the door and saying, can I come into my church? And then no one answered the door. That alone tells me that they locked the Holy Spirit out. Which would tell me so many things about what's happening in a lot of churches I see today. I think in some churches I've seen, not, if Jesus had stood at the door and knocked, they'd have set the dogs on him. We gotta, we gotta have come back to church. Let's just go back to Acts 2 and, and we'll pretend to try and close there. <laughs> I'm in a room full of preachers, so whatever tricks I can come up with, you all already know. 
So I'm not even going to pretend to close as such anymore. You know, a room full of preachers, you already do the same thing all the time to your people anyway. This outpouring. Verse 16, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in, the la in these last days, says God, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. This aspect of prophesying goes full circle because in the Old Testament, only certain ones would prophesy. Whereas now, he was saying, by definition of the time that you live in, it will not just be the prophets up the hill or the prophets down the hill who will be prophesying. All the sons and all the daughters will be prophesying. Now, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. In the Old Testament, whenever the prophets would prophesy, it brought chaos and destruction to the enemy's camp. What would happen if in the new, all the sons and all the daughters would be prophesying the word and the will of God into this realm of the Spirit? Can you imagine how the devil don't stand a chance if we would have a prophesying generation? This is why the enemy fight tongues so much. This is why the standard have to be maintained by you and I. This is why, this is why, this is why the enemy don't mind large gatherings. Again, hear my heart, nothing wrong with large gatherings. I know Jesus is preached. I know multitudes come into a relationship with him. I know people can get saved and healed and delivered. I, I know it. I love it. I praise God for it. I'm thankful for it. I want it to happen everywhere and I want it to happen every day. But my heart isn't to just do that. It ought to be to take everything God has for us. And everything God has for us is not just salvation. What God has for us is sonship. And we've got too many people who are saved, but live like orphans. But what God needs is His sons and His daughters to rise up. Because when you prophesy, you speak on behalf of the king. So when you prophesy as a son and you prophesy as a daughter, you're speaking on behalf of your father. But what kind of children can speak on behalf of their father? Mature ones. And that is what God is raising up on the earth today. He's raising up mature sons and mature daughters who will rise up in the face of any one thing and say, this is what my father says about you. We call that prophesied. And in saying, this is what my father says about you, that mountain has to bow because the father has spoken. I think in our circles, hear my heart, hear my heart, but I think in our circles, in our word and faith circles, we've surrounded ourselves time time with too, too, too many scriptures. For the Son, one word is enough. We've, we've, hear me, hear me, hear me. Nothing wrong. If, if that's where you are, if, if you need to renew your mind with, with putting scriptures all over your house and, and in every bathroom and on your fridge, go ahead, do that. But I tell you what, for the Son, one word, peace, is enough. We've hidden, we've hidden behind, we've hidden behind scriptures instead of saying, Spirit of God, breathe on them and make them real to me. Because if you breathe on them and make them real to me, one word will take care of everything I need. We tried to substitute, oh Lord, we tried to substitute scripture for spirit. And if you substitute scripture for spirit, your scripture just become a dry script. And again, here, don't, don't walk out of here and say, he said, we don't need the scriptures. Don't walk out of here. Don't walk out of, because that's, that's all a lie. That's not what I said. It's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, not Father, Son, Holy Scriptures.
And we've made it, we've made it that way in some parts. And again, I love the teaching aspect. I told you, I got born again. I, got, I grew up in a teaching revival. You understand that? I love the teaching part because that's how you grow. You just got through hearing me tell all you pastors that you got to teach. On the, you heard me say that, didn't you? So I'm not anti-teaching. But if you teach in a way and then don't make room for the Holy Spirit, I think the Holy Spirit's been ousted from many a service. He's been ousted right off. He's been ousted right off just when he was going to jump in and manifest all that good teaching you were doing. You shut the service down and he was like, wait, I got no, wait, I got no, wait, no, 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 come back next week, come back next week. No, the Holy Spirit's required to breathe life on this. That's why, that's why Paul and Timothy said, holy men of old wrote as they were breathed on by the Holy Spirit. The writing came as a result of the breath of God. And if the breath, listen, if there is no breath, it's dead. And that's exactly the kind of word some people have been preaching. They preach a breathless word. It's dead. No, we need to let the Holy Spirit breathe on the word. About five, six, I don't know how many, seven years ago or something, I wanted to plant seed for my boys. And so I went up to pastors that I know real well up there in the Midwest, and they've got a good-sized church. And I said, I want you to give me your young people for a week every year, which is not my kind of thing, you know. Again, please understand that I get nervous in a room full of people. I don't know if I'm that way with grown-ups. I'm for sure that way with teenagers, <laughs> you know. And so that's, it's not, it's not something that I would, I would volunteer to do, but I knew I, I felt and led in my heart to do it and I needed to. So I went up to them and said, look, give me the young people for a week every year. And so I have, I think this is our sixth or seventh or fifth year, something like that. And so I spent a week every year with about three and 400 of them up in Iowa, which is what direction from you all? Somewhere here. It's North, yeah, that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> if I knew what north was, I wouldn't need GPS. You know, like when the GPS says turn north, I'm like, what's north? <laughs> and the directions I had going in there with them was not to teach, but to make room for the Spirit of God to move. So every year we go up there, and, and it's, become, it's become one of the largest events. It became one of the largest events. It became such a large event that during COVID, when we couldn't go up to Iowa, we did it online instead. And the online thing, um, the online thing had 14,000 viewing. It became the largest event of, of, of that whole organization, you know. And the only thing I do every year, two times a day, four days for the whole camp. The only thing I ever do is get up, I'll talk maybe five and 10 minutes, and then we make room for the Holy Spirit to move. That means worship, that means pray, that means all kind of things. And you see the young, there is a generation hungry for the real helper to come. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Jesus said he was going to outpour the Holy Spirit, out of the Spirit, pour out the Spirit. And so I choose to believe him. And they're hungry for the move of the Spirit of God. And so they would, they would come in, they would cry, they would pray, they would run, do everything and anything. And then, and then the, the testimonies would come forth, you know, spontaneously. Kids who cut themselves got set free. Pastor was telling me, the last time I was up there a couple, two, three weeks ago, he was telling me, he said, do you, do you remember this girl? A couple, two, three years ago, she came forth. She was one of these goth type girls, all black and nailed, just, you know, all dressed that way. And she came up, came up while, while we were just walked right up. And she was all confused, didn't know her identity, wasn't, wasn't sure which pronouns to use and all that kind of thing. Totally healed and set free, serving in church today. And when I look at them, I think, here's a group of people that no amount of counseling could have helped. Again, I'm not taking away from the need to counsel, but all counseling, like everything else, must come from the counselor first. That, in, fact, in fact, that's why actually Jesus, one of his titles is the counselor. And when 
I saw that. My Lord, we went up there one time. We had a five-hour service. A five-hour service. A five-hour service. No musicians, because the musicians fell out under the power of God. <laughs> musicians fell out under the power of God. So this year, this year, some people that I knew up in Missouri, or is it down in Missouri? I don't know. <laughs> it could be. Some people I knew in Missouri had a, had a camp, and they asked me along. They said, hey, we heard you doing this, and I knew the pastor. He said, would you come? And I was like, yeah, I got the week off anyway. It didn't make a difference. I'll come, you know. I went up there, and it was a very different kind of camp. It had maybe 40 kids, and when I walked into the camp, there was nothing. I mean, I thought Iowa was bad, but listen, this camp, I was like, Jesus, forgive me for ever complaining about Iowa. I will never do it again. <laughs> I will, you know. And this camp was for kids who didn't have as much. And um, you could tell the way they were dressed and everything. And so the pastor was like, come, come on in and help us. And I went in there, and these kids were there, and they just, they were different kids, you know. They hadn't been to church much. So, so when, I, when I had time in the pulpit, I preached Jesus a lot, gave a lot of altar calls. A lot of them got born again. It was a week-long camp, Monday to Friday. Did you know that by Thursday night, by Thursday and Friday, spontaneously and organically, we had kids on the floor laughing. And they didn't have a frame of reference because they, they didn't know how. They, they're not polite, spirit-filled charismatics. They, they, they don't know, they know when to fall down politely so that Usher can come put a little cloth over them. <laughs> they didn't have that reference. And I walked away from that and I thought, my Lord, this is more real than I've dared, it, I've dared imagine it to be. This is more real. This is more real. This is more real. The move of the Spirit of God is more real. The move of the Spirit of God is more real than I've allowed my imagination to think of it to be. We got to make room for the Spirit of God. We got to make room on a Sunday morning to make room for the Spirit of God. We got to make room in our teaching and our preaching. Hear me now, Pastor. We got to make room in our teaching and our preaching to talk about spiritual manifestation again. We got to make room to talk about the move of the Spirit, the demonstration of the Spirit, the manifestation. We got to make room to talk about the Holy Spirit in the room. Why? Because the Holy Spirit represents God in the room. And if you had God in the room, why would you not want to talk about Him? Why would you not want to talk about the VIP in the room? You want to give your people a better self-image? Tell them they are no longer orphans because the Spirit of God lives on the inside of them. That will lift you up. That will put you in your right place. That will give you a better self-image of you because you're no longer an orphan. Not only are you just no longer an orphan, you got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Spirit of God Himself living on the inside of you. That's how high up you are. You're not just no longer an orphan. You got adopted into a rich family. <laughs> this aspect of prophesying, this aspect of prophesying, the easiest way to step into that is your tongue and interpretation of tongues. That doesn't happen. Hear me now. I'm, I'm, I'm really going to try and pretend to close one more time. That doesn't happen on a Sunday morning. That happens before Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's, that's when that happens. And when we come together, it's just a corporate celebration. Where whatever stream that's been flowing out of you for every day of the week, you bring that. Whatever stream you bring that. And then we'll, we'll all come together and we'll have us a corporate utterance. This is why we got to have, you know, it's interesting to me. It's interesting to me that when Brother Hagen was doing all those Holy Ghost meetings, 
one of the things that he said that the Lord told him about all those Holy Ghost meetings. And, and people thought they were wild and crazy because people were running and, and rolling on the floor and laughing and all that. Kind of. And it's interesting that, that one of the things that the Lord told Brother Hagen was that if you don't demonstrate this and impart this to the next generation, the move of the Spirit will be lost to them. It always caught me that the Spirit of God didn't say to Brother Hagen that Mark eleven twenty three 23 will be taken away from them. He said the move of the Spirit of God will be there. And, and you've got many people now trying to try preach Mark eleven twenty three, but don't have a flow to bring, to bring Mark eleven twenty three to come to pass in their life. Mark eleven twenty three don't work outside of the, of, of the anointing of the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that comes and stirs the Word in us. It's the Spirit of God that comes and breathes the Word into us and among us and causes it to come. It's the Spirit of God that is life and is everything. The times that you live in, <sighs> Hallelujah. Come on. And what I always tell everyone is pray loud enough for you to hear you pray. Come on, stir yourself. Right now, we're not interceding. We're not doing any of that. We're just stirring ourselves. Whatever was on the inside of you, you're just stirring you. Whatever on, on the inside of you, we're just stirring you. This is the only thing we're doing. Jambramenom brefikiast nai. Bate fledessa, ya so no frenessa, lemon prefidias, eo ande, ambof canasa, caramo frenessa, epefetaca ticilios and ange, keta brafikia, sitikia, sitikia, sitikia sotoke, esitikia, sitikia, esitikia, sitikia, sitikia, ha ha, and my demonstration of mofrikiso, embrofa lucenae, zede dedo fridis naste. Better fladai, a om afin das and sotra non fredas, brafadus and ah, creco reseto de bifredista, mandele cosa saprefene, corre man jingala mampre becos, sufricis non jacala mampre for lotata de bofrenis, sufridiste, better my, better fredes, sofrenista, prophetiti de os and angere, e pete tutu lomo fledas, tata mampre bes. Pete, 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 Reme, Este, Este, Efe, Go, 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 go ahead of that, go ahead of that, I go ahead of that, go ahead of that, yeah, and bo, and bo, fine, a sambato, and brefesete, and brefasonde, a a basso, a am brefe, a a zuti, a se, nenge, zendu, zande, zambona ma, sitili, asam, a beto, no nefle, de desa, a number of lusa, a no frepasa, an imprafase, an imprafase, an imprafasene, an impofone, aha, brefe, an impartation to buffedusa, an impartation to pray, an impafoconose, an Imprafacas nombre, and incolonos and anancra bafatota baha for day. Aha, a yo domo for day. A prayer plate, a prayer plate, a pole for day, and enlarging of that. And mosa candeke, and bax non for bay, and imbra for condai, and zenga no 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 more for pante, a tupa mo ombre for betiki asam, a katamo ofrikis no ombre for culiaste, a aso, befeta, kesupi, fanto coramote brefitonta. 
pe prefetus the name pe tafra to sopre pe pata from master impato fre te co soto meto samaya sotombre mi munte kai mon brambo fre casta im profeto fre dishtanai ah so bato non brificete pe te fra maya so prefeteto fre vivibitato to fra basta eh so tafra ba ah so prefetito non bro for lucenai yeah so profeto fra yeah he's stirring that on the inside out of you he stirs more for kessa mess of your 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 spiritual manifestations he's stirring on the inside of you the demonstration that's where he's stirring a number of kidi on day em brefenesta em brefotoke ingrando frecasta mato fredestin gringoa ambre keia zombra panto crono moste creteca ranasa betafra nasto curiasta mengrombo fredasta brufulusanai es the brefotoka rastiti mata frabate te ha ha za stir of forfrebesta so a stirring of framaste a stirring of stofrenisa grai em bro fotuka rando frenaste keia ha show combo umbra for last and day yeah that that too father that too father yeah that too father so the stirring will include things you thought were gone the stirring will include the things you thought were lost the stirring will all for hey yeah he's stirring that too he's stirring that too it is a morfedisa em bro for oh my bo for keste my that was a bo for Que se mangi in glando flanasa coli eh ah be so mesa e flan de fle dosa pete flenesu tutu tu bu frenisu non breve eh pata framasa ta framaso pate be 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 so fetititi sotto sombre ande de non frenasa zo frenesta Mata fra basso soffre mesta te 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 mo fra mesta don bremei om bambai so the so the stirring so the stirring so the stirring so the stirring ha 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 zombre vi masti zembro mumu kama fra casta ah stirring 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 cause the spirit of god and the mo fra kiss on breve mesta ah a stirring of some breve and you say i want a stirring of signs and you say i want a stirring of wonders and I, you say i want a stirring of the ability to teach ah but the spirit of god is stirring on the inside of you the basic things the stirring on what fra the utterance from the spirit of god are being stirred on the inside of you <laughs> ah divine utterance stirred on the morphic castle brain gaya ah there is divine utterance being stirred on the inside of you i see uh, divine utterance divine utterance divine utterance because as long as there is utterance there will not be death ha zomban jom brefela som brefinista kraya ay so monday so fricasso so that 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 tongue and that 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 interpretation will go on ma som breve and produce on brabas and grand go for das utterance before manifestation ha zombran ba fro coast and green day fredasta deep waters deep waters deep waters yeah mo fenge som brufinish and grand dom bre pa ba fro coast of frikish nasta Ha so prefinis the brafa nasta wofre desta brafa tofre ken na mafre kes zofre dish to die na brafa costa de fre kes zofre mis to get a mafre kes zofre nis de ben baia dofre kes zofre masta kar mafre ke zo brafa naste bata fre das the prefikia so brafa no kan tap him on the shoulder for me tap him on the shoulder for me so i so i hear the spirit of god say so your hunger for the word and your thirst for the word will bear much fruit not just in your life but for those that i've called you to and those that are ordained for you to talk to because there are those that i've ordained for you to talk to and you've wondered past couple of months now where are they and when are they and 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 who are they but i hear the spirit of god say there are those of ordained for you to go to and those ordained for you to speak to and you will be a voice to them and you will bring life in what you say and then brave lusa banje kala mo frikasta and there will be fire come out your mouth too men then blow for lusa banje kala pa for do sakai what is this i hear about you what is this i hear about you what is this i hear about you stirring in you the waters to pray what is this i hear about you stirring in you the waters to pray stir 
Pata fra nas on brefe les on bring gongela bu fra mas a ta fra mendele me fra mesta mata bra falas a bru felusa pete fredesa pata fra mon jeng glend on bri filista bra fala mate fra bas on bri finista bra falosta Pastor Pat I Pastor Pat I Holy Ghost the rivers and the depth of the waters on the inside of you is meant to spread out and flood many other regions. Now, I'm saying this based on what I already know, but I, again, I say this by the unction of the Holy Ghost. And so the flooding and the flow from you both, the flooding and the flow from you both, the enemy will not set up dams to stop that flooding and the flow because the flooding and the flow will have a force behind it that can only be described as divine. And whatever dams have been placed up, the force will... Re Shh. It will clear the path. I hear the Spirit say it this way. It will clear the path and what is blockages that are in... The blockages will be removed by the force of the Spirit of God. By the depth and the flow and the, of the utterance. And, the, and oh my, and this is a seasoned hand, I see the Spirit say. They're seasoned in these things. So the basics of the seasons, uh -huh, the things you have been seasoned in will see the way. The things you have been seasoned in will prepare the way. The things you have been seasoned in will go the way. And so it is, it is, it is. You both will go and do the things I put on your heart to do. And they will be planted. And there will be a force behind them that they will look out and they will say, my, 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 how did it happen? My, 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 when did it happen? My, 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 how could it happen from them? But the force and the flow, the force and the flow, the force and the flow, ho, ho, make cream bo free so my you've been used you've been that that prophetic flow that prophetic flow that prophetic flow has made much way and make one bring ganja umbo for no sakaraman they let them offer that so don't let the enemy shut your mouth because that utterance that utterance that utterance i see it this way i see you miss pat i see you pastor pat you stand in front of mountain and i see from your mouth come vibrations of the spirit and the vibrations of the spirit shook that mountain and it crumbled to nothing and so i hear the spirit say go on speaking go on speaking go on speaking because i put a word in your mouth for that Ha 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 I hear us say it this way. For every mountain I've given you a word. Ha ha ha. For every blockage I've given you an utterance. For every for every roadblock I've given you Ha 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 Uh Bringesum Bramban Jele Mefre Naso Briffy Lisa non Grand Alfred Nasodaya. Ah, uh, so a stirring, a stirring. It's time for you, Pastor Pat. It's time for you to stir those waters again. It's time for you to stir those waters again. It's time for you to stir. Don't let those waters go still on you. Don't let the water go still on you. Don't let those waters go still on you. Your waters are too deep for it to go still on you. Too deep, too deep, too deep. Zembran banjom brifilis tom brangan jabla fenu frikesa brafa ningring go frebesa so fridish the bottom under korum afridesta. Yeah, operation and demonstration of the Spirit of God. Operation and demonstration of the Spirit of God for our season, our time, our age. That you and I get to be alive in a time where the Spirit of God poured out. The, the, the words that the prophet of all looked forward to our time and wanted the time you and I live in yeah. and, 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 and didn't get to be in this time that you and I have. Let the Holy Spirit come back among us. We need him. Not as a goosebump on a goosebump, but the reality of who he is. Peter Brifinin Grango Breme Frecastamai. Zembra fa no crendo frikista nan jungle ba frikista ba ta po frikista. The way the enemy stop thing, pastor, the way the enemy stop thing is by shutting up the prophetic. Enemy's prime goal. Not just there in Acts 2, but you look at the Old Testament, that's what the enemy try and wants to try and do. If he can shut up the prophetic, no manifestation will come.
And again, I say this by the unction of the Holy Ghost. You've been used greatly that way. Your mouth has been a trumpet for the Lord. And that sound is necessary for manifestation. That sound is necessary. Sound clears the way for the Spirit of God to move. We call it words, but really it's sound. Words mean something to us, but in the Spirit it's sound. Because words, we give the definition to words. Human beings do. We decide on what a sound means, and then we call it a word. So we give definition to words. But in the Spirit, it's just sound. That's what the, that's what the prophetic does. It, it utters sound into the Spirit. And in uttering that sound into the Spirit, things vibrate and change and move. And I saw you standing this way, and it looked like vibrational waves come out your mouth towards that, and it, and it shook and moved. You've got great depth in you. I already know this coming in, but you've got great depth in you. In that region that you're in, Kentucky, every region needs a sound from heaven. You're, you, I mean, you could say that about every region. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to be in a, every region needs a sound from heaven. But I found that it takes a while. I found, Pastor, it takes a while for God to train me to where I can recognize and then repeat his sounds. It, the issue isn't him, the issue is me. I need training, you know what I mean? I, I need to catch up. I, I need to catch up to him, right? So God has to, and this thing we call time, which was created for us, because God as an eternal being, here now, God as an eternal being is not a being with a lot of time, he's a being outside of time. So God don't need time. Time was created for my benefit, not his. So in, in, in his goodness and in his mercy in giving mankind time, part of the benefits of time is that I get to use time to learn how to be like my father. And that's where the prophetic is raised up. Because in, in, the, in this thing called time, I get to learn how to... See, that's what prophets do is that they speak on his behalf. How can they speak on his behalf if they don't recognize what he's saying in the first place? So if I don't recognize what he's... If I don't hear right, I don't speak right. Right? So prophetic training starts not with speaking. Prophetic training starts with hearing. Because if I don't hear right, I'm going to be talking all kind of nonsense. <laughs> and that takes time. It takes time to train my ears to hear. You've got that part covered. It takes time. It ta so God, in wanting to move in a region, has to raise people up by the virtue of time who have learned to hear right first. And however long that takes is however long that takes. Because how, it's however long. And, but once they're raised up to where they can hear, that's when they're in position to start speaking. Yeah. Right? And that's the part that the enemy try and fight the hardest. So go on speaking. That's why Ephesians 2.20 tells us, Apostle, Prophet, the foundation of the church. Because they bring divine order and divine utterance come. And then the others come and reshape that and help us with that. And we need them all. But there is order. Just because, just because there's order doesn't mean one's better than the other. It just means that there's order. That's it. Yeah. That, that's all it means, that there is order. You all are part of that order for that region. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. My so brave in Africa. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God among us. Thank you for stirring the gifts and callings and anointings and destinies that are already represented in this room and in these churches, all the different churches that are represented here, represented online. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Pastor Duan, Pastor Denise, you all better come and take this before we start right into the evening service without breaking for lunch. <laughs> Can we maintain this uh, atmosphere for just a moment? Hallelujah. And and uh, I'd like to share something with you, if I could. Um, big picture, zoom out for just a minute, right? So Dr. Tan just mentioned that there are a multiplicity of churches that are represented here today. 
and yet we collectively are the church, right? And I can honestly say that I didn't fully understand and yet am still learning the fivefold offices and their function in the church. Again, big picture, right? And the value, the intrinsic value that is afforded to us as the church to see the fullness of the operation in all of those offices within the local expression of that individual church. And so I see some of you, and while we were praying in the spirit, it was interesting as if the Lord was showing me uh, the representation of the body of Christ here just in this room, readying us for what's yet to be unfolded in the next few services. So whatever you had on your calendar, firstly, I encourage you to lay it aside because he's wanting to do and accomplish something far bigger than what we see in this room right here. And so as we were praying, I saw a building. Now, my father built churches for years and years and years, decades, physically built churches. And he would always share with me the necessity, the vital quality, and that was something that came out of Dr. Tan's mouth a few months back. And that's why we called this gathering, and we'll go there in a second, as we did. And the foundation laying and how important that is, right? And so we've laid some foundations. You all have laid some foundations. He has laid some foundations in your ministries, in your life's lives, excuse me, already to date. And so it was as if each of you were representative of pillars in the church. And that it wasn't just a gathering, but there was a strategizing and an assembly, right? right? And so there was great specificity with regard to why each one. And so the Lord then confirmed to me why we've been praying out that, Father, it's not just about numbers. It's about who is assigned to be here. And so then as I saw this, I saw that of the office of apostle being that of the roof being placed on top of as the covering over as a protective quality for the church at large. Did you notice that there is a corrective tone, although he doesn't come across abusive, you understand what I'm saying, there's a corrective tone that we, the church, should embrace and want so that our ears in this day are not tickled, but instead we have the fullness of truth being afforded to us to keep us on that straight and narrow because what does the word say? That he who endures how to the end will be saved. How important this office, that of the apostle, which touches all of the other offices, and you see that flow in and through that gift. And so how do we then honor and therefore heighten our receptivity and our ability to receive all that God has for us individually and corporately for the ministries that we represent? And so we do that by way of expression in valuing it. So I just wanted to ready our hearts this morning as we purpose to get ourselves ready to worship the Lord in our giving, all right? And so all of these offerings that we receive, you notice we didn't charge any kind of a, uh, a per person price because we want to make it available to everybody, how important that is. And as a result, we're going to receive an offering every single time we gather as an assembly. Can we do that this morning? So let's just bow our hearts and get ready because this quality of ministry in and through what so happens to be the apostolic office that Dr. Tan operates in, this is necessary for the church, the church. Would you say amen to that? It is necessary. It is vital I can't stress that enough, and I pray that you receive that by way of revelation by the Spirit. And so, Father, we ready our hearts right now. We thank you, Father, that whatever the Spirit of the Lord prompts us to give, both in this service and in, on every wave, every opportunity that we have to worship you in our giving, we thank you, Father, that this precious gift of God receives the honor that is due 
And Father, I'm not ashamed to ask for it. I'm not ashamed to say it. I thank you for the opportunity to give into your kingdom so that this voice is not muzzled, but instead is accelerated into the fullness of the plan of God upon his life because we are the benefactors as a result of his obedience. And we are grateful for it. We say it collectively and in agreement. And so, Father, we bless this offering. We thank you that it be multiplied for your work and your kingdom purpose. And we trust you in this, Father, in Jesus' name. And all the saints shout it, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's receive that this morning. Don't leave, if you will, for just a moment. Let's go ahead and receive this offering. And then here in just a minute, we'll take a restroom break, and then we'll have some instruction regarding lunch. Anybody smell something coming? We hope this message is exactly what you needed. If you'd like to bless this ministry, you can do so online at generationchurchme.com. If you'd like more content from Generation Church, you can do so by following us on social media. We also want you to know that you are welcome and you are loved. Thank you. Have a great day.